Is it just me or the idea of, I need a safe space? Does it drive other people nuts? Cause it's killing me right now. Welcome to the channel, Leadership with Mike. On this channel, I help new managers become better leaders. And I do that with no nonsense sense, if that makes any sense. And speaking of no nonsense, I'm done with this, I need a safe space. The idea of it, I get. And I don't know if I'm just poisoned by these social justice warriors, the images that I have in my head, but the idea of it is killing me. But it's not necessarily what it really means that's the problem. I find when things like this safe space, when they hit a nerve, I have to dive a little bit deeper because I know I am of a certain personality. I know I'm a little bit rough around the edges at, at times and I'm okay with that. And if you're not that way, I'm also okay with that. So I had to kind of dig a little deeper and try to get an understanding of what this safe space at work is supposed to mean. I mean, Jesus, we're not going to let people punch in the face. We're not going to allow you to get taken advantage of. If you say something stupid, somebody might say you're being a little bit stupid. Am I okay with that? <laughs> yeah. If it's really, I worked with a guy who he was on health and safety and he had a lot of great ideas, but the way he delivered it was he was whiny. He was trying to cause conflict. He got told to shut up all the time. Maybe not actually in that shut up, but by every level of management, by every level of the union, they were like, man, you got to just come on. So when people say I need a safe space, I think, I think of those people, like, I just want to be able to say whatever I want to say and you need to accept it, which it's okay if you want to do that. But then I get to say whatever I want to say and you have to accept it. Now with my research, and kind of diving in and talking to some people, I realized this isn't the case. I've reframed it in my mind. When somebody says I need a safe space at work, what they're really saying is I need to feel welcomed. I need to feel included. Oh, I get it. I understand. And as a manager, as a leader, it is easily something you can provide for people. Now, one thing that I kind of was able to read up on was that everybody wanted it or a lot of people were implying that it is a no judgment zone balls. I'm calling bullshit on this one. Listen, as leaders, we need to make the environment as non judgmental as possible. That I'm a hundred percent behind. We want our team, our staff to be sharing, but, as an individual, as Mike, I am not walking into any room with the assumption that I won't be judged. I get judged every time I come on this camera. I get judged when I'm talking to my kids. I get judged when I'm hanging out with my neighbors. I get judged when I go to the store. This is the world we live in. You are going to be judged. So if you want to just freely express everything that comes to your mind, understand as much as a company, as much as a team, a manager, uh, a coworker will say, oh, well, there's no judgment. You really got to know how well you know them. Now with that out of the way, you as a manager, how can you make a welcoming space? What some might call a safe space. First, make sure your team knows it's okay to make mistakes. It happens. We're human. If you're trying something, no, let me start over. If you're doing anything at work and you do not make mistakes, you're playing it way too safe. Now I'm not talking about health and safety mistakes. So let's play that a little bit on the safe side. But if you're not trying to do something a little bit better, grab a little bit, few more sales. If you're not trying to just bring the team up a little more and you don't make a mistake, then you're just okay with the status quo. And I don't know that that's okay. So make it so your team knows that we expect mistakes. I don't expect you to make the same mistake 10 times. I do expect you to make a mistake, learn from it, be better, 
make a new mistake, learn from it, be better. You see, we get that upward trajectory by making mistakes and learning from them. Nothing great was ever done by sticking with the status quo. I don't know if anybody said that, but I'm calling it now. Next, make sure your team knows that their contribution, that it matters. It matters to you as a leader. It matters to you as part of the greater team. Because we have these people on staff to contribute. We don't want people, or we, in my mind, we shouldn't want people just to come in, do their job, keep it quiet, and leave. Contribution matters. Effort matters. Even if you're working on an assembly line, your effort matters. Your effort will help get the production up. Your effort to say, what if we did this? And that, that effort of thinking outside of what your day-to-day -day is could save thousands, millions of dollars. Who knows? It's the effort of contributing your thoughts, your ideas. Make sure your team knows that that is very valuable to you and the team. Next, make sure that people know that as an individual, they matter. It's very easy, especially in larger companies, corporations, to feel like you're just, you're lost. Nobody knows if I come into work. Nobody knows if I don't come into work. It's very easy to get into that gray state of just being. Let your team know that as an individual, I need you. I want to know about you. I want to talk with you. Okay, you may not want to talk to everybody. I get it. But at least know that, make them know that they are valued. Because here's the thing. If they are not bringing value, my question then is, have you worked with them to get that fixed? And if you have and it's still not happening, should somebody else be on your team? I'm not going to answer that. But your team needs to know that you value them as individuals. And I hope that your team brings value as individuals. Next, as a leader, as a manager, your EQ, your emotional intelligence means a lot. That, to me, EQ is so much more important than IQ. EQ is when, when, when people are talking about this safe space, your EQ can pick up on people. You know when somebody like myself is just talking shit for the sake of it sometimes. I'm just trying to get a laugh. Or I'm trying to ruffle a few feathers because I'm bored. You know, you, with high EQ, you can pick up on who I am. You can also pick up on mm, so-and-sos, they don't speak up much. I, I know they're shy, so you know what? I'm gonna circle back to them after the meeting to see if they have any input. Because not everybody wants to speak up and raise their hand and talk in front of people. Your EQ can help you figure that out. Your EQ can help you build relationships with people, meaningful relationships. With high EQ, you can build great relationships with people like me who are a little bit loud, a little bit, you know, throwing jabs here and there. But you're also able to build relationship with the quiet ones, with the people that, you know, they just kind of go about their way that a lot of people won't know about. You will because you're working on that EQ and you can see, you can figure out ways that what their interests are, what they want to talk about, why they may not contribute in a group and how you can get their information out of them and help make that individual feel welcome, feel that their contribution matters. See how we circle back? <laughs> Next, make sure your team knows that they can be risk takers. This comes back to kind of making mistakes. You make mistakes because you take risks. Your team has to know that you will back them on, let's call them reasonable risks. I'm not saying, you know, bet the whole, all the money on black, but if it's a reasonable risk, it makes sense the, the risks have been calculated and it seems like this is a, let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Make sure your team has that idea, has that mentality behind them. Let's give it a shot. Because I know that if I make a mistake, my manager's not going to come rip my face off. We're a team. We're building that trust.
And with taking risks and with making mistakes and with not always succeeding, make sure that in a welcoming environment that you champion effort. You can't expect your team to knock home runs out of the park all the time, but you can acknowledge the effort that they're trying. You can acknowledge the effort that they put forth to speak up to their group, to contribute, to bring their personalities out. This all takes effort. And if nobody acknowledges your effort as a leader, it's hard to produce more effort. But if you are getting acknowledged, you're like, damn, that was a good try. You know what? I'm sure if we tweak it like this, next time we'll get it. I just got acknowledged for the effort. I got acknowledged that I took a little bit of a risk. I acknowledged or I got acknowledged that it didn't work out because I made a mistake, but it's all good. I got a team behind me. I got management. I got leadership behind me. I'm going to do this better next time. This is all encompassing what I understand a safe space is. It really irks me in these social justice warriors. They just annoy me. But people on my team that are asking for a welcoming space, a space where they can grow and contribute as leaders, as managers, that is our responsibility to nurture. That's our responsibility to make that environment. So call it whatever you want, a comfortable place, a safe space, a welcoming space. Your job as a leader is to make people the most productive for themselves and for you as a lead for your company. That's your job. Your job is to deal with the people. So make them welcome, make them comfortable, make them feel safe if that makes them feel better. And after you've digested this, get your coffee and let's go to the next video.